Hi everyone, I'm back with another video after a while. In this video, I'm going to talk about portfolio. There have been a lot of questions regarding the portfolio for art universities, but I have not been able to answer all of the messages. So I decided to upload a video about it and hopefully this video will answer your questions. Um, this video is for people who are trying to apply for the Japanese art universities and don't know how to create their portfolio. So regarding your major, whether it is animation, or illustration or painting this video is for you and also at the end of this video I show my own portfolio that I got accepted with so stay until the end of the video so now let's talk about creating the portfolio okay what is the portfolio your portfolio is a representation of you and your art it is very important since that's what a school would make their decision on whether you will be enrolled or not. So let's get started. The first rule is only put your best works. It doesn't matter how many artworks you have, only put your best ones. If you don't have any idea which are your best works, which by the way, every artist knows which one are their best works. But anyway, ask a friend to help you choose your best works. The second tip is the extension of the first tip. Do not make it super long. So think about it. You're in the room with too many portfolios with a short amount of time and there comes a portfolio that is 100 pages. You're definitely going to be tired and probably be bored and reject the so-called applicant because clearly they don't know anything about portfolio and how to present their work. You don't want to talk so much. You just need to talk enough and be influential. Think about a good quote. It doesn't have to be extra long, but I understand I really do because my portfolio was almost 50 pages too. But if I could go back, I would have definitely make it shorter. It's better to keep it up to 30 pages max, I would say, but also don't keep it super short because it will look like you're lazy. The order matters. If you're applying for manga, for example, but you have a lot of fine, good illustrations, and you have an animated work while you were in college too, it doesn't matter if other works are so much better or if they look better, if they come first, always, always put your desired major first. So if you're applying for manga, your manga comes first, then a more related works like illustration, picture book, and so on. Also keep in mind that your desired major should take up more pages than others. So if you have only two pages of manga and then 10 pages of illustration, it won't look professional. So now we come to the next tip, which is put different ranges of your work. Okay, I know it sounds confusing. So the goal is to keep it short as possible, but keep it diverse. So if you're applying for animation major, for example, put your illustrations also, put your figure drawings. If you paint, put your paintings too. Um, for applying to universities, not only it is important to show your skill in the designated area, but also it is important to show your have diverse abilities and skills. So next tip is have both online and offline portfolio. So for Japanese universities, you must have a paper like hard book portfolio. Japan and Japanese universities, they are not functioning at high tech really. They're still very old fashioned. It was only after COVID and the pandemic that they started doing things more online. I remember one of the universities sent me the letter of the rejection by post mail. The letter of the rejection. So now most of the universities accept files through emails or links, but most of them don't accept if you only have a website. Um, but if you have a printable portfolio and website, that's a bonus point. Regarding the size of the portfolio, I would say if you want to make it fancy, you can go for anything other than A4. But as I said, some of the universities are still print um the online files instead of viewing it on a screen and most of the times they will print it on a4 size on a normal paper 
uh, I think it's already changed. Like most of the universities, they uh, view the portfolios on the screen. But in my opinion, uh, even if they don't view it on the screen and they print it on a normal A4 size, it's not a big deal. Do what works for you. But if you want to keep it simple, you can stick to A4 or A3. Next tip is share the process of some of your works. It is always very attracting when you share 0 to 100 of the process of a work. Just don't overdo it. You can also put some photos or videos of the behind the scenes or your desk or tools like brushes. Trust me, it always works. And the last tip is put the links to your social medias on the portfolio. Instagram, Behance are good places to show your work. For animation, Vimeo or YouTube is a good place. Uh, at the time I applied, TikTok wasn't a thing, but if you are sharing your works, especially if you have a large followers, it's also a good point to add it on your portfolio. But if you are more of an influencer, I'm not sure, they might not take you seriously. I really have no idea. I mean, Japan is a little different than Western countries, but if you're sharing your artworks and using it more as a portfolio, I think it's a good thing to put it on your portfolio. Okay, so next I'm gonna show my portfolio that I got in the university. First of all, this is not a portfolio I'm proud of. It was very rushed. I only had a month to finish it and my laptop just broke. I lost a file. I, it was a lot of mess. So I had a very short time to build a new one from the scratch. Second, this is the portfolio I made after I got the max scholarship and it was for university entrance. So after you get the max scholarship, you will become the research student for a year and then you take the university entrance exam. And if you pass that, you will enter the master course. But the university exam is a topic for another video. I'm not gonna talk about it in this video, but just know that this portfolio is very similar to the one I applied with for the scholarship. As you can see, the numbers for the entrance exam are still attached to it. So the first page is an introduction of my name and websites. Always make sure to put a photo that is taken. Sorry for the wind. Um, the photo that is taken within six months and it's nude. Next page is um, the summary of my education. I put the history from my junior school up to bachelor and there's photo at my university back home. And I'm here. Next page is a short introduction about me. I'm talking about my childhood and that I was born in Japan and how anime and manga affected my childhood. And it was the reason animation became my passion. Here's a photo of me back then when I was painting. I was always painting. So if there's anything about your background that makes it interesting that it is recommended to put it. Your hometown that you grew up, the work or artist that inspired you. I mean, if they're Japanese, that's even better. And then it's my skills. Side note, if I would do my portfolio again, I would shorten the introduction parts and probably summarize all these pages in one. Like three pages is honestly too much. So from here, my actual portfolio starts. As you see, first is animation and is my graduation program. So it's also better to put the works in order of new to old. This was a series of college artworks with a sh uh, short animated in paper cutout. You can find these works on my Instagram and also on this channel. I'm gonna update it from now on. Next one is the stop motion teaser I worked on. It was a group project and it was one of my favorites. Here I added photos of the process and behind the scene. Next is the motion graphics I worked on as a freelancer. And here it comes my animated short comma. I send the links of the animation uh, separately in the email. You can also put the QR code to your animated works. Another animated works, I put the character sheets and the storyboard. And next is the illustration exhibition that I curated. It was important since the story I wanted to work in uh, on my proposal was the same story, which is the, one of the Iranian folklore. 
I have worked on this illustration already. So here in the description, I talked about how this story inspired me and how it was the starting point for my proposal. And this is me and my friends who participated in the exhibition. It was a lot of fun. So the only part that is different from the portfolio that I applied with for the scholarship is this page. These are some sketches related to my research proposal and animation that I was supposed to work on in my master course. Since I was already accepted as the Max Scholar and I was a research student, I had already started working on my project a little bit and I just put some of these sketches on the portfolio. Next is the character design. From now on, there are the things that are related to animation. Some illustration artwork, hand-drawn and digital. These are the series of portraits I worked on during the shutdown of the COVID because I was so bored. You see the Rosa Parks, Madame Teresa, and Virginia Woolf. Here is an example of sharing the process of the work. As you can see, I put the sketches up to the levels. I added color and textures and shadow. Now you're looking at my drawings. These are my favorite series. So from now on, there are the assignments or the projects I worked on while I was uh, at the university. So my major was graphic design. I had some animation courses, but honestly, they were nothing. All of the animated works I put on my portfolio are either my personal projects or the projects I worked on as a freelancer. If you're anything like me and your major is different from the one you're applying, it's good to put some of the artworks too. So this blue one is the poster I designed for my music teacher. He had a group concert in Paris and it was an honor for me to design his poster. These are magazine covers I worked for and also the layout design. So um, from here, I would say it's almost irrelevant. And I, if I was about to do it again, I would definitely get rid of all these artworks. They are not that good and they're completely unrelated to the major I was applying to, which is animation. I wanted to show how diverse is my skills and how many different things I worked on, but honestly, the quality of these artworks are lower than the rest. At my college, we pretty much learned everything in graphic design and it was required to be the jack of all trades, but um, I realized here in Japan and Asian countries uh, specifically, um, it's better to focus on one or few skills. So the last but not the least is the awards and honors you have. You can mention them. Thank you so much for listening and watching my video so far. Please don't forget to subscribe and comment and share my videos so I can keep creating more videos to help you guys. Thank you.